see good you. Good to see you. Right here. All right. I still get, you got to hold, yeah, we do make your, this is a low budget thing. I we, know, we do I make know. you hold the mic. I still get goosebumps watching those two returns. What goes through your mind when you, because you watched it hundreds of times and for no other reason that every time we bring you up here, we make you watch it again. Hey, you know, the, uh, the older I get, the more I like seeing that stuff, you know, I mean, that's just, uh, uh, when I get introduced at uh, speaking engagements, I'm the one looking at the video like this now, wow, you know, but, you know, hey, it's, uh, it's a part of history, it's a part of my life, and uh, it's something I never get tired of looking at, that's for sure, you know, because um, that's a night that literally changed my night, changed my life. That is probably the night that got you over the top in the sure. Heisman Trophy voting. You made it look easy. And I, you've told me the story before, but I want you to tell it to all these folks here. You don't look tired on the second run, but apparently you were a bit tired because those, those kicks were very close together. Yeah, I returned the first punt and I go to the bench. I literally put the oxygen on. We kick off, the defense goes three plays and out, and I'm sitting there with the, uh, with the oxygen mask still, still on, my, on my face. And I tell Coach Stu, I said, Coach, I can't do it. I said, you have to block the punt. So if you look at the punt, there's nobody blocking for me because everybody went to block the punt. And my goal was, OK, let's just take the ball and run out of bounds. Well, when I got to that angle, the guy jumped out, and I had a hole. And, I, and once I got inside, all my guys now coming back, picking people off. And I have a little thing with me and the putter. If the putter touches you, then there's a problem with you return the putt. So, so I made him look a little silly. I got to tell you the story. I got to tell you the story about the punter, Montgomery. The next year, he was with San Diego. He was a rookie with San Diego. And he punted me the ball, and the Red Sea just opened up, and I'm coming right at him again. And this guy does like a soccer-type ninja kick on me and splits my leg all open, and he gets up, you're not going to do that to me again. You're not going to do that to me again. So obviously he had to uh, you know, remember what had happened to him uh, in college also. Was that legal at that time? No, it wasn't. Sure. Well, Did they flag it, it? Well, it's the Raiders, so anything is legal versus the Raiders. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but they did throw a flag on that play. You've got so many great memories. But when you think back at your time at Notre Dame, what stands out to you? You know, I, I tell people this place is much more about sports. You know, uh, yeah, I came here, academic, uh, athletic scholarship, academic scholarship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they told my parents it was an academic scholarship, not an athletic scholarship. Uh, but my memories here are more about the people that I, I met and more, more so than the sports. I mean, yeah, I mean, what happened here for me in sports changed my life. So I'm not trying to downgrade that. But the people I met, one of my best friends, uh, that I took away from here was a guy who was a first uh, generation uh, China uh, from China and you know Tony Lee and we're still great friends today you know so having connections like that meeting the people that I met uh, you know all my teammates you know I still talk to these guys most of these guys you know if not once a month definitely not once a week most of these guys every month you know, and those are the things you take away. I mean, it's, it's such a special place, man. And when you walk away from here, you don't walk away from here with just a degree. You walk away with here with an opportunity to do something special in life. And it's not just necessarily being successful. There's nothing wrong with being successful and making a lot of money. Money's freedom for your family and whatnot. But I know what I tell people now, having been here now, I can't believe it, for three decades, that this place turns out outstanding student athletes who excel on the field, on the classroom and in life, and by life, I mean you make a difference in your communities. And yeah. you have been involved. You don't have to. You played forever in the National Football League, but you have spent much of your time, beginning about halfway through your NFL career, getting involved with young people and charitable foundations, and you continue to do that today. Did Notre Dame have an impact on your doing that now? Well, certainly. You know, when I was here, I realized that football players are looked at a little differently. You know, I, I came from a high school, we were 425 and one my three years on varsity, so. You weren't a big deal. I wasn't a big deal at all, you know. But when I got here, I realized, wow, you know, I mean, people, somebody may actually listen to me. So um, I was very fortunate to have my mom and dad the whole time. I realized even here, there were a couple of guys on the team who didn't have their father in their lives. So, uh, and I wanted to do something with that. I wanted to find uh, kids who didn't have positive role models in their life and try, try, to, try, try to be an impact. Uh, it just so happened my fourth year in the league, Howie Long literally came into the locker room and he was screaming, where is Tim Brown? And I was like, big boy's mad and I don't know what he's mad about, so let me get out of his way. And I was dipping and dodging, trying to get out of his way. 
and uh, he courted me and he said, I'm retiring after this year and you're going to take over for me. And you know, the smart thing to say at that time was, yes, sir. And so that's when I said, yes, sir, and you know, didn't know what he was talking about. I got a call from a young lady. Uh, long story short, uh, for the last 21 years, I've been running this program, Athletes and Entertainers for Kids. Uh, we do a uh, temporary mentor mini camp out in California. Um, and uh, so it, it's exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I just got uh, put in a, a different kind of way. So, uh, but giving back is what it's all about, man. And uh, you, you talk about the, the guys um, who, who come through here. A couple years ago, there was a list that went out, uh, Notre Dame players, the guys who, who had played here with me. Probably about, I don't know how many guys were on the list, but when you look at what these guys were doing, yeah. I mean, that vice president, marketing, uh, CEO, you know, it, it just blew, blew me away. And, and you know, I, I, I joke with, with Flash Gordon. Flash is running this program down in, uh, and, um, in southern Indiana, the Worley program, where they're helping these abused kids. And, and, you know, I think about Flash, you know, we first came here in 84, this was a kid who convinced us after one practice, who tried to convince us that a quarter, a nickel, and a dime was 35 cents. <laughs> you know, it's like Flash, that's 40 cents. No, it's not. And he tried to convince us, but this young man is now running a great organization, but that's what a Notre Dame education, it can take you from thinking a quarter, a nickel, and a dime is 35 cents to, uh, to running a great organization like he's doing now. You know, and he still loves Notre Dame. I don't know how many of you heard, he was our guest analyst on our post-game radio show after the Purdue game, did a great job. I'd love to hook you up with that, but I don't think we pay enough to get you on, the, on that. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's not about the money, but we could always okay. talk about that. I'll, I'll be contacting <laughs> you about that. You have written a book, The Making of a Man, How Men and Boys Honor God and Live with Integrity, really about your life story. Why, why did you write the book? Well, you know, a lot of athletes have uh, written books about their exports on, uh, on the field and, and some off the field, but I wanted to take it a little different, uh, a little, little deeper, and get into the spiritual aspect of it because um, even things that I learned here about myself spiritually, some things I'm not proud of, uh, some things I am proud of, um, but, um, and we really want to go in depth with that because I believe that I have been given this platform for a reason. And it's not just to win Heismans and College Hall of Fame and hopefully one day in the NFL Hall of Fame. You know, it's not just for that type of stuff, but I believe that there is a deeper and a higher calling. And I believe that I am supposed to do this to, to help some other young brother, you know, see that there is a, a spiritual aspect of this also. Uh, so for me, um, you know, my whole goal is to, to find these guys who are, have bigger platforms than I have, or maybe some guys who have smaller platforms. It doesn't even matter. But to get these guys to understand that God wants us to use our talents for him. And, and if we can do that, uh, in whatever way we can do that, then that's what this thing is all about. And you are very open about your life in oh, the yeah. book. You can go ahead and read it. We won't get into all the details. And you did things that you were not proud of. Mm -hmm. But I think what also, the theme I get, one of the many things from the book is, all because you make a mistake doesn't mean you're a bad person. That's right. And it doesn't mean you can't learn from it, and it doesn't mean you can't be forgiven. And, and I, I believe that, you know, our mistakes are our, our biggest building grounds. You know, that's when we, we have the, the opportunity to really turn that right into a wrong, you know? So, um, and that's what I try to do. You try not to make the same big mistake twice. You know, little mistakes are gonna happen, but, you know, you can't make those big mistakes twice. And, um, and uh, this, this, uh, this book has been an incredible journey for me. I've been able to speak at churches and youth groups all over the country. Just last week, we got an invitation from the great Billy Graham's people. Uh, they're flying me down for a book signing at his library. So, so the book must be doing okay if Billy Graham is thinking that it's, uh, it's all right so, and his people. Um, so I'm very excited about what we're trying to do, man. We're trying to do God's work and really uh, get people to focus on, on, on that aspect. Uh, you know, naturally, we got it. We know how to live naturally. But uh, there's a spiritual aspect out there that I think we have to be cognizant of. And, uh, and uh, I'm putting it out there as much as I possibly can. Now, you do spend a little time on the golf course. You're a three-and-a-half handicap. <sighs> when did you start? Well, that's what your bio says. When did you start golf? Um, I didn't start until I left here. Um, you know, I, I have this crazy story. When I was 11 years old, my, my elementary school principal came to me and had been watching me and thought I had great hand-eye coordination and said he wanted to teach me golf. 
And I literally went home and told my mom this man had cursed me out because in, in inner city Dallas, golf was like something to even think about. So, so I, I, that's one of the big mistakes of my life, not taking him up on that. Uh, but uh, I didn't start, I, I, I used to play tennis. Tennis and basketball was my thing. My, when I tore my knee up, uh, my second year in the league, they wouldn't allow me to play tennis anymore. So I had to come up with another sport. So I started playing golf uh, probably three years later. I was 25, 26. And uh, my swing is ugly. It's really ugly, you know. But I have a way of finding, finding how to hit that ball straight. And, and we just, uh, we just keep, keep swinging at it. You may have seen him on the Golf Channel in the NFL Challenge Puerto Rico. Now Jerry Rice's team won. Yeah. They're pulling for you. But you also use it. Your skills in golf and your love of golf is a fundraiser. You host a couple of, of big tournaments I want to talk about. The first one, you just hosted your 20th tournament, you smart guy, mm. with Kathy Ireland. How did that combination come Oh, uh, you know, I mean, every once in a while, a man got to do what a man got to do, you know. So, uh, you know, Kathy is, uh, is a great Christian lady, and uh, she's been a part of um, uh, this Athletes and Entertainers for Kids charity uh, before I got involved. And uh, we just connected. Uh, our hearts connected, and uh, every once in a while I go and, and um, every year, I go and spend time at her house out in, in Santa Barbara, and um, so she's been a great uh, asset to our to our, our golf tournament and everything that we're trying to accomplish. And uh, she's such an incredible lady, has such a great heart for giving back and uh, trying to do some good things. So, so yeah, we do that tournament every year. Uh, up here, I, I'm, I'm a part of. I don't know if you guys have heard of Five Star Life, uh, but uh, it's a charity up here that uh, is trying to combat the kids who are dropping out of school. 7,000 kids a day drop out of school around the country. And uh, what this program has been able to do is take the kids in the Michigan area and really flip that number on his head. So uh, I was out at the uh, new facility we have up in Union, Michigan uh, this morning and uh, really looking forward to uh, bringing that program out. We're doing great here in the Michigan area. We're down in Texas now, looking to go to California all over the country. But uh, I had my golf tournament here at Warren's course uh, this past summer, so uh, looking forward to building that to a real big, real big thing here in the next couple of years. Is it going to be at Warren again next yes. year? Yes. Okay, so uh, just get in touch with Warren if you would like to play in that. I do have to ask you what Lou Holtz means to you, because I know he made a huge difference in your life and career. Well, I mean, Lou, Lou is, uh, he was just everything. It's just amazing how a man can see something in you that you didn't see in yourself. Um, you know, I came here with one purpose, and that was to graduate from the University of Notre Dame. I, I really could care less about football. And after my first play, my freshman year, I think everybody agreed with me that I could care less about football. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I fumbled the very first opening kickoff of my freshman year. So, um, so but you know, when Lou came here, it was at a, a, a time in my life where, okay, I was over the hump academically, things were great there. Uh, I was playing a little bit more you know, my sophomore year, so I was happy with that. But you weren't a featured guy. No, absolutely. No, I, I, not at all. So when Lou came in and uh, he started saying all these great things about me, first of all, I was trying to figure out who he was talking about because I just didn't believe some of the things that he was saying. But he would take me in every day after practice and show me what I was doing on the field. And after a couple of weeks, I got it. I understood that I, I could give more, I could be better, and, uh, and the whole thing just manifested itself exactly the way he said it would if I trusted him and believed in what he was saying. So, uh, yeah, from that standpoint, uh, he changed my life, there's no doubt. Without him, I don't win the Heisman. And without John Gruden, I'm not in a position to be in the Hall of Fame. That's just, it's, it's, that's clear, it's just the way it is. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Heisman Trophy winner, college football Hall of Fame, nine-time Pro Bowler, 19 years in the league, Mr. Raider. On a team that was known for being edgy, he was the leader. Has anybody explained to you why you're not yet in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Oh boy, you talk about. Does that bug you? Uh, well, it bugs you because um, you know you, you give you give your heart and soul to something, then you want to be rewarded for it, no doubt about it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, my wife uh, and I were in London uh, last week with the Raiders, and uh, my good friend Andre Reed was there, and he just went in this past year. And man, he was telling the whole world about him being in the Hall of Fame. And uh, my wife after a while was like, if I hear Hall of Fame one more time. <laughs> so I don't want to be that guy. But at the same time, I, I certainly understand his excitement about, about being uh, in the Hall of Fame. But hey, you know, I'm hoping and praying that. You're nominated again. Yeah, I'm up again. That, you know, Chris Carter went in. I mean, obviously Jerry went in. Chris Carter went in. Andre is in. I am the last of the 80s receivers. 
Um, so it almost makes too much sense for them to do it this year uh, because they could literally close the book on, on those guys, on us, and then start on the Marvin Harrisons and all these other guys who are going to be coming up. So, um, you know, I, I'm not holding, holding my breath for it to happen, but uh, I think this year is a, I probably have a better shot than I've had in the last couple of years. Oh, if they don't, we're all going to go down to camp and burn the hall down if they don't do that. Well, you and, you, and, you and a whole bunch of folks from Raider Nation will be right behind you, too. <laughs> and maybe the perfect people yeah, to burn exactly. down. I can't believe I said that. The reason we had to sh switch this a bit, I talked about Tim's done a lot of radio and TV work. He's very good. He now works for Sirius XM, so he's got to do a show on College Sports Nation at 1 o'clock, so we moved it up. But now that you're a commentator, I can't let you go without having you talk about this year's Notre Dame team and what you've seen. Um, I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm surprised. You know, I think after what happened uh, right at the end of training camp, I don't think anybody expected that the team would come out and play uh, so cohesively uh, initially. You know, so. Uh, I know that uh, watching Golston a couple years ago, he was good. Couldn't imagine that he would come back after you know missing a year and be better, uh, but he has been. Uh, except a couple couple plays last week, I guess. Uh, but um, you know, so it's been impressive. It's hard to believe sometimes that one guy can make such a difference in a team. But I guess if it's a quarterback, then that makes sense. So. Uh, but I think uh, as he goes, the team is going to go. If he plays great tomorrow, I think they, they'll win the game. If he has a couple turnovers, then it's going to be difficult. But, uh, uh, but I'm very proud of these guys, man. I'm very uh, proud of Coach Kelly uh, pulling these guys together. I think with what they went through at the end of training camp, that could have tore this team apart. And obviously, whatever happened, everybody was on the same page about it, the players and the coaches, because that's the type of thing. If the players believe that some of these guys are being treated unfairly, uh, that's it. The locker room is done, and uh, and, and they go out and play accordingly. So, uh, for these for the guys to go out and, and play like they played this year, uh, I think everybody's on the same page. And now it's just going out and trying to make it happen. How do you see the game tomorrow with Stanford? Uh, you know, it's a turnover game. You know, Stanford's had some problems turning the ball over themselves. David Shaw and uh, and I are real good friends. We've been texting each other. I'm trying to. He wanted me to come over to practice today. He has this guy Ty Montgomery. That Tim, he's just like you. So well, he can't be like me on Saturday, okay? I don't need him to be like me on Saturday. But uh, uh, but David's a good friend. Uh, great respect for him. Uh, you know, this is a, a guy that you know is going to have his team ready to play this game. And uh, but I think if Notre Dame protects the football, uh, they'll win the game. Tim, thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. He is not just a great Notre Dame football player. He is a true Notre Dame man, Tim Brown.